Hey, this is Mike Kosicki, tight end for the Miami Dolphins, and you are listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's football time again. Hey, hey! Every week, I love football. <laughs> Are you adding lyrics? <laughs> well, it's yeah, I, 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 that was not added. Oh, is that it's another just, verse? It's just revealing. It's a different. Is that the third verse? <laughs> Over the years, slowly, people will finally know all the lyrics to "It's Football Time." Well, that just keeps them glued in. That's the only reason they're here. Stay tuned for 2024. Yeah. The next big reveal. <laughs> You're releasing new verses like new versions. I love it. Uh, Thursday, September 24th, we've got a jam-packed show. Taking it up to 100. Just like that intro. Mm-hmm. Just like those lyrics. Some news, some notes, some injuries to catch you up on. Fantasy forecast, the matchups. Starts of the week today. Jason's boom boom kicker. Mm, I've been told oh. by a very reliable source that it is the absolute worst. Best. It's the worst. I have not. I, I, don't I made know. the mistake of. Oh re- no! I, I looked at it. Yes, it, it is. It is. It is the best. It's the worst. I I multi multi levels of terrible. I have not seen it. I have not heard it. Okay, you get so the review. I, I, I'm very excited. YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballer. Subscribe. Click the bell if you want to watch the show. That's where you do it. Appreciate everybody supporting the podcast, subscribing, leaving reviews on Apple Podcasts. The community, jointhefoot.com. We added the Injury Blitz podcast recently, which comes out on Fridays. Uh, Matthew Betts delivering some last minute injury news. Very helpful. Oof, talk about taking it up to 100. Yeah, the reviews have been solid. Mr. Betts. Mr. Betts himself. But um, no, we've got we've got football tonight. We've got the beard versus the mustache oh. tonight. I can't wait. I, I have never been more excited for a Jaguars-Dolphins game in my life because of these two mediocre quarterbacks as far as you know how the NFL views them I actually I'm glad you said it like that Jason because I I can see the future I I know you are aware of that I do have and it just seems like Gardner is going to be the next Fitzpatrick in the sense that what Jacksonville should do is use them at use him as their their quarterback for the entire future which Fitzpatrick should have been a quarterback not gone through each and every team in the NFL. He should have just... Remember, Houston moved on from Fitzpatrick to get Brock Osweiler, right? Hmm. And Buffalo moved on from Fitzpatrick, and Cincinnati moved on from Fitzpatrick to Andy Dalton. New York? Was he on the the Jets? Jets. Yeah, I mean, we could go for days. And all these teams just should have had Ryan Fitzpatrick as a quarterback, and I'm worried that that's the future of Gardner Minshew. He should just be the starter... But if they get a high pick, they'll be tempted to, oh, let's, we can do better. If Gardner has the future that Fitzpatrick had in the past, <laughs> we are all blessed <laughs> in the future because I can't wait to watch him on every team that has ever been in the NFL. He makes the full mustache tour. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever as, that as is. As he ages, he'll get to a beard. All right. Let's jump in. Taking it up to 100. Presented by Head & Shoulders. Available at Walmart. I feel like you got really serious at the end of that drop. (laughs) Look. Got a little darker. You got to know where it's available. I know. All right. If you haven't heard this segment, we're each picking a player that we think will take it up to 100. In week number three, we're picking outside that kind of starter consensus group of fantasy options. Or, or a player that just hasn't done it yet, and we think this is the week. Last week, uh, Jason had Deontay Johnson. Oh, two for two. Uh, David Montgomery was Mike's pick. He had a great week. I went with Scotty Miller. He did oh, not work out. He, he was one drop away. I'm going too – I realize I'm going too far down the list. 
Oh, I see. I'm feeling like I'm getting a little. I went like Boston Scott and Scotty Miller, and I'm over. T- oh, it's the Scott. Oh, that's that, the that, problem. Oh, no, that. great Scott. You got to avoid that. <laughs> great Scott. Um, this week I'm gonna go with Scott Bayo. <laughs> no, not Scott Bayo, and that is. <laughs> I don't. That was the first reference. That's the first Scott I could just, think of. <laughs> ancient. Open the crypts. Pull the oh. reference out. I'm going to go with. Devin Singletary. I'm going to go with Devin Singletary. Okay. So I'm, I'm back into the exact same group of, All right. of deeper names. But Zach Moss is banged up. He was he was not at practice yesterday. He was working on the side. Um, if you look at week two, the running back opportunities in Buffalo, Devin Singletary had 13. Zach Moss had eight. Uh, I, think, I think there's an opportunity this week for Devin Singletary to give you a, a good game. So I'm going to... I'm going to give Devin Singletary this week to take it to 100. All right. All right. Go ahead, Jay. I like that. I'm going to go with a player that, you know, we told everybody to pick up yesterday in deeper formats and dynasty leagues, and that is Drew Sample, second year uh, tight end, a second round pick. A lot of people forget that Drew Sample actually had that uh, pedigree coming in. You had CJ Uzama have a great game last week before, unfortunately, going down to a season ending injury. And then. Drew Sample comes in and gets nine more targets. Now, they were in a a, a must-pass situation, but I think the Bengals will, you know, there's a good chance. That's their default mode. On, yes, their default mode is, oh, we're down. So let's uh, give it to the rookie, have him throw the ball. But the matchup against Philadelphia, the Eagles, they just gave up three touchdowns to Higby, and in week one, Logan Thomas actually was pretty good against him. So I think, I think Drew Sample... Uh, confirms why we had you pick him up this week, takes it to 100. And I'm going with, uh, I'm jumping in with Andy here. I'm going with a bit of a, could be a deeper play, a more difficult thing, but I'm going Jarek McKinnon, who, it, look, he's still on the San Francisco 49ers. This is, the Giants, look, Montgomery smashed. Snell took it to them as well. McKinnon is back to health. He absolutely fits the Shanahan system. I think this is the week he can prove that Shanahan was right a couple years ago to go and try and make McKinnon the starter of this team. He's already, even with his limited work last week, he's 10% of the targets for San Francisco. My name is Jeff Wilson, may get the goal line carries. May he, Look, they're going to be both going to be used, but I expect McKinnon will continue to be used in the passing game and he has shown that he still has that electric ability that he had. I, I feel slighted here by you saying that this is some deeper. You're you're going it with Andy. Is. You're going super deep. I wanted to have this be my pick, but you already had him. I'm I'm much more confident in Jarek McKinnon than you two are. I I definitely think he takes it up to 100 this week. Are you saying that when I'm proclaiming McKinnon will take it up to 100? Are you saying I'm not confident? I'm you start with the, oh, I'm going super deep. He's not, I'm starting him in most formats. I do not think that he will get the work that everybody else thinks, but I've, I've said that already. So I was going to ask you if you'd prefer Singletary or McKinnon, but I already know the answer. Take your hair up to 100 with head and shoulders available at Walmart. Pick yours up today and check out next Tuesday's episode to hear how our up to 100 picks Fared? Mm. Hopefully a little better than my last two. <laughs> News and notes from around the league. All right, Justin Herbert is going to start week three against the Panthers. I view that as good news for Austin Eckler. I do. And, and the offense. And the All players. Allen. Yeah. Uh, this was humongous news. The beat goes on for Philadelphia and wide receivers. What is, what is in their water? What is going on up there? I don't know. Jalen Rager suffered a torn UCL in his thumb. It's a long-term injury, guys. Yeah. Six to eight weeks. I will throw this out there as a fantasy recommendation. Alshon Jeffrey's going to be back pretty soon. Oh, I like it. If you want to pick him up, you can put him on your IR. You can put him, uh, you know, basically, as long as you maneuver that spot, he'll be free. And... They don't have anybody right now. I actually think like Deshaun Jackson's a pretty good play this week. He, he really is. I know that people are disappointed with what's happened, especially because of week one, but Deshaun Jackson is a good play right now, as is, you know, people were disappointed with Dallas Goddard this last week. <clears throat> Dallas Goddard will be involved, and without Jalen Rager, both Ertz and Goddard will get enough targets to be relevant. I would completely if agree. I, if, I, if I had to start Goddard last week, 
I am not pivoting off him this week because he had a bad game. Yeah. Yeah, he still was fairly targeted in that game, wasn't he? Yeah, it just didn't it didn't turn into fantasy points. I saw I, – I don't remember who tweeted it. Somebody broke down Carson Wentz's first quarter to the rest of the season. <laughs> in the contrast, he had – that when I tweeted that he was having a great game, he was, you know, 120-plus pass rating, amazing first quarter, and from every quarter on, he's been – He's arguably the worst quarterback in football. I, I don't know if you guys saw, but the official NFL research Twitter put Carson Wentz on blast. I saw it. And they just basically showed how bad he's been on his accuracy at all levels. And when you get out of the layup throws, he's been horrendous. Yeah, I the hope with Deshaun Jackson this week, with no Jalen Rager, is you're not going to be splitting the deep targets. They could hit on one of those big plays, and you can have that game we were expecting from DJX in week one or week two, but the office doesn't give you a lot of confidence right now in, in the way Carson Wentz is playing. I'm sorry, Carson. Miles Sanders, please. Yeah, I, yeah. So looking at a, a number of names, players that didn't practice on Wednesday, there are a lot of players that don't practice every week on a Wednesday, whether it's Veterans Days Off or Monday, Monday Night Football Days Off, but I think a couple notable ones. The Zach Moss one was notable to me in terms of him missing some time. That's a new injury we hadn't really heard about. Uh, Jack Doyle's still not practicing, so we could see if Mo Ali Cox is a thing again this week. It, will he be a thing again? Get yeah. out of here with that doubt. We still haven't Gigantor. seen A.J. Brown practice, so if you're hopeful he returns, we need to see him on the practice field. We did see Kenny Galladay come back to a limited practice. If you are wanting to be confident in playing Galladay, you're going to want to see a full practice by Friday. But we'll keep you up to date either on tomorrow's show or in the Injury Blitz podcast. Jerry Judy, he's got a rib injury. He missed practice or was limited. Um, yeah, maybe would, worth noting. I would expect him to play. He did come back into the game after suffering the injury. Just don't don't give him an injection into those ribs. Oh, my into goodness. Those ribs. Um, DJ Chark, what's the latest for Thursday night football? So DJ Chark has basically missed practice the entire week and with a game on a Thursday night, that's that's not optimal. However, the the news this morning trending upward for it's a great matchup. Like, this is an incredible matchup here for Gardner and all of his weapons at the wide receiver position against the Miami Dolphins. I don't think I'm playing Chark, like trending upward. Really? That was going to be my question. So you're feeling like I, I, I this year I have kind of taken the approach of when guys are super limited, I'm I'm just not playing them. Now, like Devontae Parker, it didn't work out. Parker came out and he had a pretty good game. If you had benched him because you were worried about the injury, it it feels bad, but. I th I think you th at this point there are other options that you've grabbed off the waiver wire. Maybe you secured someone like Robbie Anderson on your on your bench off of the waiver wire. So I would look for those options. I'm not Keelan Cole in the same game. Uh, that like if you're super desperate, I don't mind that because he's, the the target share has been great for Keelan Cole. What if I'm moderately desperate? Uh, moderately <laughs> desperate, probably not. Okay. Okay. Did you have any thoughts there, Jason? You wanted to weigh in? Uh, I, I do think that more often than not this season, and really historically, when you don't play a player who is hobbled right in the first week when they when they come back from that injury, it works out to your benefit. Yeah, I mean, uh, you, you brought up Parker this last week. He had a touchdown, but it was only 5 for 53. It wasn't this monster game you missed out on, whereas there's plenty of examples. You know, Mike Evans, week one. Um, it, yeah, that, that's you, what I'm talking about. You chose about. to bench Mike Evans, and you were happy you did, even with his two-yard touchdown in totality. If he misses, I think Keelan Cole is a strong play in the game tonight with the good matchup. Jamison Crowder, doubtful for Sunday. Perriman's not practicing either. Is this the Braxton Berrios experience we have this week? Chris Hogan. It, it, look, I mean, Berrios was actually good last week. It should be Chris Herndon. It should be. But I, but it's I, not. I have no confidence that it's going to be him. It's ridiculous. You don't trust anything from that team ever in any situation. I will play a nobody. Yeah. Yeah. Stay away from number two. 
<laughs> all right, before we move on to the fantasy forecast, take a look at all the matchups. I want to remind the Foot Clan about Pristine Auction. They have been Tell such me more. a long-term partner. But if you are looking for a way to take your media room up a notch, if you're looking for an awesome gift for a family member, get ahead of the Christmas season that is quickly approaching Pristine Auction has all the signed sports memorabilia you can handle. It's an auction, so you can pretty much you just... You can't handle it, I you, dare say. You, you, you just check in every day and bid on whatever prices you love, and then eventually you, you'll win one of these for a price you won't believe. We talk about it all the time. Chris Godwin signed jersey yesterday, $76 finished auction. That's what it went for. DJ Moore signed jersey from the Panthers, 63 bucks. I mean, the, these, these aren't like... Oh, we found one good deal. We've right. We've been doing this for years. We've decked out our studio, signed authentic, verified signatures on these awesome jerseys, cleats, uh, footballs, helmets, whatever you want. Check it out. And when you sign up, make your completely free account and use the code BALLERS. You will get a $10 credit towards your first purchase. Check it out, pristineauction.com. Fantasy Forecast. All right, it is football time. The week three matchups, they're here. Oh, boy. The Chicago Bears take on the Atlanta Falcons. The Falcons are three-point favorites. Their psyche is potentially damaged after last week's collapse. It's a 47-point over-under. They've been very productive on offense for fantasy purposes, but uh, and they are favorites here at home against the 2-0 and Bears. So, Matt Ryan, we know what we're getting with Matt Ryan. He's a start-worthy fantasy quarterback, 300-plus yards or two touchdowns in 16 of the last 17 games. It's nice to know that you're getting that production from Matt Ryan, and they're throwing the ball a lot. But, you know, we have a quarterback eight on the week. He faces Mitch Trubisky in this one. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Is that true? So the Atlanta's given up the quarterback one in each of the first two weeks? Yeah, and I wanted to bring this up because the defense against Atlanta is one that if you've targeted this year, it doesn't matter who it was. You're, you've been very, very happy. But is this a, a matter of the Cowboys and Seahawks offense being great, or is this the Falcons defense being horrendous? What is the truth? Well, we're going to find out. I think, that, but yeah, if I do a weigh in on one, I think it's more that Dak and Russ are upper echelon offenses. So I, I lean the other side. I, I lean the I mean, you had Dak without uh, uh, his left tackle, and um, he still turned it on. I, I actually think Mitchell Trubisky is a fine play this week. I agree. Well, I think, wasn't he your... Yeah, he's my stream of the week. Yeah, I, I don't think... Those can be mutually exclusive. I, I think it can be more about Russ and Dak and still have, you know, Atlanta's defense struggle at the same time. So I think Mitch is all right. He is on the road. They are 2-0. and We'll see what happens. Allen Robinson is Mike's start of the week in this one, so he buys into the fact that Atlanta's defense is just very vulnerable, and you, it's hard to argue with quarterback one two straight weeks. Todd Gurley, he's only had 66% of snaps, five targets in week one, zero targets last week. What is he? Is he a low end RB two? Is he a RB three yeah. at this point? He he would be a low end. He's a low end RB two uh, that you can not really Antonio even Gibson count on. right. Antonio Gibson got all the work last week against Arizona. He plays Cleveland. Would you play Gibson over Gurley? Wow. Um. I. That's that's a that's a very close call. I. I think I would go with Gibson. I think it's. There's more upside to him. What the the problem that we have seen with Todd Gurley this year is that there's m multiple other guys now. Like week one for Washington, Gibson, McKissick, and Peyton Barber. Last week they they trimmed some fat. They went with just Gibson and McKissick. Meanwhile, in Atlanta, you got Edo Smith, you got Brian Hill, and Todd Gurley, and you have those other guys. Not Todd Gurley getting the work inside the five as well. That Todd Gurley is not the dedicated goal line back like when you drafted Gurley you were at least hoping that was true he's going to get some passing work he'll be the dedicated goal line what guy. if he gets no passing work and it's not the goal line back that's he will, what's he happening will be, <laughs> yes he will be what he was last week 
which was you started him for fa- in your fantasy team and went, oh, that was terrible. He and had, Lad, what are you doing? He had 21 carries. I, if you told me that through the first two weeks, they're using Todd Gurley in the way that total opportunities, he gets 19 opportunities and 21 opportunities. I'm should telling you, wow, you should have drafted him. And here I am saying, no, I, I completely agree with Mike. I would rather play Antonio Gibson over Todd Gurley right now. What about the uh, the running back on the other side of the ball, though? David Montgomery, 16 touches in week one, 19 in week two. He's 5.5 a carry on the year. He is He's surprised everybody because yes. we didn't even think he was going to be playing. Would you start Montgomery over a Gibson? I would, yeah, oh. I would start Montgomery over Gibson and Todd Gurley. Montgomery, to me, has moved into a, like a reliable a RB2. Reliable RB2. I mean, we're only two weeks in, so maybe it was just it turned out to be the matchups, but Montgomery looks like a different player right now. I mean, he was he was a rookie last year, smaller school compared he's like he's not an SEC running back. And so like he, let's let's give him the, the chance to grow and he looks like he has come through with a great off season. Was it Mike Davis that got the first snaps in Chicago last year? Yes. It reminds me when you brought up Peyton Barber getting like week 1 and then kind of disappearing. It reminds me of what happened with Mike Davis in terms of the Montgomery Gibson rookie comparison. David Montgomery or Kareem Hunt against Washington in that defensive front. Washington's been very good up front. I don't know how in the world you don't start Kareem Hunt in every situation. I mean, I I Really? I, I look at Kareem Hunt as someone that I will not be benching. See, Kareem Hunt has been very efficiency oriented because he's a phenomenal yeah. running back. That's he's, the problem. It's not like some outlier where th- this is a guy who led the league in rushing and is a, just a phenomenal running back who's in a role that doesn't get the opportunities you would want him to, although he's getting more than a lot of people expected. Uh, Hunt is a must start for me. All right, looking at wide receivers, Mike has Allen Robinson as his start of the yeah. week. This is, and I wanted to go with this because, uh, look, Allen Robinson has been not great for fantasy purposes. Uh, 40% of his targets, uncatchable. That is not Allen Robinson's <laughs> fault. He like He's still a great player, and I believe that this is like, you, you'll see these with elite wide receivers having two down games. Yeah, I believe it was like, it was Hopkins last year. It, it Hopkins or Adams. Someone had a couple down weeks to start, and we came in said, "If you're going to trade for that player, you have to do it right now because he's about to go off." And then whoever drafted Allen Robinson will be the the roots will be back in, and they'll say, "Yeah, this is the player I thought I was drafting." So I I love him. The matchup is too good. The Bears have only given up 24 fantasy points to opposing wide receivers this year, the sixth best in football. Julio Jones could sit, which makes Russell Gage very interesting because you look at Russell Gage and say, well, big target share. Julio could miss. Calvin Ridley can't catch every pass. But the Bears are a pretty formidable defense against fantasy wideouts. Are you starting Russell Gage as a wide receiver too if Julio's out? Yeah, I'll start him as a flex play if Julio plays. I'm I'm in. I'm in on Russell Gage. I'm in on the, the passing attack from Atlanta until we see otherwise. Okay. And then Hayden Hurst. Yep. All right, Jimmy, uh, Grandpa. Uh, in a, if you're in a tight end premium, super deep <laughs> league, yeah, Jimmy Grandpa's in. What an endorsement! Yeah, the Los uh, Angeles Rams take on the Buffalo Bills. Bills are two and a half point home favorites. Is this um is this tight enough? Is this spread I guess big enough for me to make this my pick? Sure. Andy's almost upset of the week. I don't know if you guys noticed it didn't work out for me last week. <laughs> yeah, Look, uh, uh, I'm not saying we tried to warn you. But we're Bill, not going to get them all. But Bill O'Brien sucks. Yeah. He's a yeah. bad coach. All right, the Rams are underdogs, and I think they end up winning this game. Taking on Buffalo. Buffalo oh, wow. had a, Against your beloved Bills? Yeah, yeah. And all it, right. It, it's not only against my beloved Bills, Mike. It's also in a way, against my beloved Cardinals. Because this is one of the games where I would like to see a division rival in the unbeatable NFC West, which I think has one loss. Seven and one. And yeah. the only loss was given to the 49ers by the Cardinals. Yeah. Yeah, that was great. But I think Los Angeles is just playing very fundamentally sound football week to week. And I think Buffalo is going to have to do the same if they want to you know, win this ballgame. Obviously, Vegas has them as favorites by two and a half points. 
and the Bills are playing good football. But again, I, last week it was very, very close. Miami could have won that game. Um, the Rams, they've been playing great. They're number one in terms of uh, pace of play right now. And the Bills have run, they're, they're eighth fastest. So this is going to be a faster game. It's got a high over under 47 and a half points. What are some of the, I mean, I brought up Devin Singletary who may have an opportunity in this in, in this situation. He could. And the Rams have given up a lot of points to opposing running backs through two games, which is another thing that factored into that decision. Um, he's had 10 targets through two weeks. We hoped that Singletary would be that passing down back. What are the storylines in this game for you? So to me, it's the storyline we'll be watching the running backs of, of Buffalo and seeing what happens. The transformation that this Bills offense has seen it reminds me of a couple years ago, uh, the Dallas. When, when Dallas turned things around, they started the using, Dallas, as we call it. Yeah, I, I, yeah, <laughs> the, the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, they they turned things around. They they changed the scheme. They got out of the mud and being curmudging. They start using play action all the time. And Josh Allen is absolutely crushing right now on play action because it works. It, it play action is a very funny thing because it just always works and teams need to be using it far more often. So and it's it's relegated these running backs in Buffalo to be basically useless for for fantasy purposes. And then on the other side, what happens with the as we have dubbed it the random wheel of the Rams backfield. I think Daryl Henderson is I think he's a a decent start this week. Uh, we have Cam Akers. He exited with the rib injury. He has not practiced this week so far. I'm expecting him to miss. Malcolm Brown has a busted finger. Henderson, this is his chance to show off he was not a mistake to take in the third round uh, just a couple years ago. Okay. Quarterbacks, you're starting Josh Allen because you're staying in the fire? Yes. 100%. Yeah. I would probably not play golf, though. See, it'll be interesting in this matchup specifically. The Rams are fourth best against opposing fantasy wide receivers, and you imagine that Jalen Ramsey is going to be, you know, on Stephon Diggs for the majority of this game, which through two weeks, John Brown has been a top wide receiver. Could he be the major beneficiary of, of kind of the situation with Diggs yeah, I and mean, Ramsey? Yeah, uh, I mean, I believe Cole Beasley was missing some practice, so John Brown is is certainly that guy that is going to be the main beneficiary if Stephon Diggs is locked down. That and I believe Josh Allen's running. I think he will scramble and pick up a lot of yards on the ground here. Are you confident with Cooper Cup and Robert Woods as wide receiver twos this week? Woods, yes. Cooper Cup, maybe not as confident, but I'm still going to play him. That's as a exactly two. how I feel. It's interesting. I'm always, Cup had a much better game through the air last week. Yeah, I'm always confident in Woods just because of his consistency and the fact that he pretty much always has a, a decent game. He's the center of the offense. He's just not the the nitrous. And you hope that Cooper Cup can get in the end zone and uh, you know turn things around. I don't know if they have any nitrous. <laughs> I think they might have lost their nitrous. Tell that to Higby yeah. last week. Yeah, yeah, I mean a goal line touchdown. No, but I, I know what you're saying. They're, they don't they're... really have Brandon Cooks to stretch the field right now. I mean Van Jefferson's made his mark, but to me, I don't feel like they have a. They're just a solid V8. They they're a a fast they're a they're a Dodge not Charger not the not the uh, vegetable drink correct I am very excited to hear Jason talk engines. cars yeah. talk yeah. engines engines you know they're a solid tell, tell they me don't more have about any the twin turbo but <laughs> everything you know about V 8 in sixty <laughs> seconds yeah you know the point is I think that the offense is it's a Hemi the <laughs> what does that mean I don't know what it's but it, got but what? it's a Hemi I've heard it's great <laughs> yeah um so. Anyways, the, the Rams Hemi offense is <laughs> chugging along. It's really been looking much more like their Super Bowl season than it than it looked like what we saw last year. The problem is, and, and you kind of just spoke to this when you talked about not having that twin turbo, is there isn't a clear <laughs> cut uh, beneficiary for the, the high upside like there was with Gurley or there was for a while with Cup you're kind of rolling the dice there. So that's why I say I'm always confident in playing Robert Woods because he's just, uh, you know, he's just normal gasoline in an engine. Can <laughs> I can I end it, this? Yes, you, you can. You didn't say but anything you, about pistons, spark plugs. I mean, those should have come up. Who's the spark plug of this offense? Well, I mean, I mean clearly this week it's Daryl Henderson. The, okay. The, the nitrous, to keep going with this ridiculous analogy, 
It could be Daryl Henderson this week. Okay. All right. How many horse jokes does he have? <laughs> <laughs> the little gaff again. Yeah. The Washington uh, football team takes on the Cleveland Browns this week. The Cleveland Browns are seven-point favorites, which seems, quite frankly, ridiculous to me. And I'll tell you why. In fact, I did not think you would let me have the almost upset in the Rams game, and this was my backup. Oh. Was Washington. The Browns are seven-point favorites. I've got an idea. Make up for last week's terrible one. Do you want me to have two? <laughs> Heck yeah, man. So I can go 0 for 2 this week? Andy's almost upset of the week. Here's the part where I tell you I'm going to take Cleveland to cover this seven. That's fine. That's fine. Look, here's the reason why. The recipe for beating the Cleveland Browns is to slow the running game down. The aforementioned Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb. Mm -hmm. The Washington defensive front before this season it's mighty nice. was a pro football focused top five defensive line. In the season through two weeks, they're number two in terms of fantasy points given up. The shade thrown on Kenyon Drake should be praise heaped upon the Washington defensive line and what they did in that game. They've given up 11.5 fantasy points in totality to the running back position. Last week, Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt combined for almost 50. Something's got to give there. And if you put the ball in Baker Mayfield's hands and say win the ball game, that has not equated to a victory very often, much less covering a seven-point spread. So that would be my argument of concern for this offense. Yeah, I, I'm I'm actually excited to see because I've questioned the defensive line for the Washington football team. I, I, I'm not sure if I really fully buy in, but I want to. And this is the proof in the pudding because when you talk about trying to stop Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt, you either – you either are good enough or you aren't, and we're going to find out this week. So this will be really telling for me for upcoming future matchups. We always talk about having enough data as the season goes along to start making bolder, more sure calls, and I think this will bring clarity to that Washington defensive line. Yeah, and this is why I, I have less confidence in the smash play of Kareem Hunt than you do. I mean, Kareem Hunt to me is is a, an always play because he's game script proof. If the game is close and they need to throw the ball and put it in Baker Mayfield's hands, it's going to have some dump offs to Kareem Hunt. If they are up on the seven point you know line and they're crushing, then they get to run the ball more and Kareem Hunt touches it that way. So I I just don't see being able to. I don't to think he had a it. fantasy point until the second half last week. I'm fine with that. I just care about what. How many fantasy points does he have at the end of the game? I agree. I agree. Just those, those old first he's half leagues. He's going to have some disappearing games. That's my whole point. It, he had him last year, and he's going to have him this year because if he doesn't bust off eight point nine a carry in the fourth quarter, there's going to be games he disappears. I'm with Jason that I'm confident playing Kareem Hunt. I mean, the, the Deshaun Jackson or Kareem Hunt. Kareem Hunt. Uh, man. Probably Kareem Hunt. Okay. Uh, we, we were talking about David Montgomery Asking or, for or Kareem Hunt. I'm more confident in David Montgomery because of the touches. I mean, Kareem Hunt is going to – part of playing him will be, you know, some cardiac problems as you're watching the game. I felt like an idiot for a half and a genius for a half. Yeah. Let, Antonio, the, whole, let the whole game play out. Antonio Gibson. Yep. He's up at RB22 for us this week. McKissick had uh, 29 snaps last week. Gibson had 43. The Browns' defensive front has been very good as well. They're at home. Gibson's been elusive, but this offense is kind of... They are also elusive. In, are, they, it, are, are, they, are they present? <laughs> yes. So, I, you know, Gibson, to keep the comparison going... Are we back to the cars? No, we're back to David <laughs> Montgomery. <laughs> oh, and Montgomery kind of took over early last year. The total touches for Montgomery were outstanding. But the Mitch Trubisky problem mm -hmm. reminds me of a Dwayne Haskins problem. So if you can't move the ball, can't provide a lot of goal line opportunities, high value opportunities, Gibson could have a lot of touches, not a lot of production, cementing him in that RB2, RB3 range. Yeah, I, I don't mind that argument. I do believe that the the mantle has it, – it, we have passed the torch here. To Antonio Gibson. He's the starting running back. He's the primary guard, which we don't know yet did that turn into. We won't see the uh, atrocious Peyton Barber 
at the goal line over and over, and then he finally breaks in. Like, will Gibson get those touches? We aren't sure yet. I I think we are there. I think he will. But you're right. The, the matchup against the Cleveland front is not a very positive one for Antonio Gibson. We still have not seen them, the Washington football team, unleash him in the passing game. Maybe we finally see that this week. But Gibson is a volume play. I think you can play him and uh, like last week where he got a whole bunch of touches, didn't really do a bunch, uh, but he did end up getting the touchdown at the end, saving his fantasy day. All right. When we talk about Terry McLaurin, looked great last week against Arizona. He gets Denzel Ward. Ward was outstanding against A.J. Green a week ago. If you watch the tape and all the things that factored into those, you know, the force feeding of A.J. Green, the complaint of separation problems for A.J. Green, Ward was at least a piece of the puzzle. Yes. He had his best pro football focus graded week uh, in quite a while in that matchup. He's Terry excellent, and he has the speed to keep up with Terry McLaurin. So I have some concerns, but I can't imagine that those concerns would turn into benching no. Terry McLaurin because the balls have to go to him. He will have the opportunity. In week one, you had 100 first, you know, first half yards from another speedster in uh, Hollywood Brown. So I, I, I think Terry McLaurin is is fine, but Denzel Ward is not an easy match. Terry right. McLaurin is a better wide receiver than A.J. Green now. Yeah. No doubt about it. So I'm not uh, worried about Ward. Odell Beckham Jr. had the nice week last week. Oh, man. What do you do? <laughs> McLaurin or Beckham? Oh, oh man. That's, that one's easy for me. I'm, I'm going to stay in Terry McLaurin. I, I want the new hotness arrow pointing up than the – uh, question just question mark is he old busted? What, isn't the arrow pointing up for Odell after last week? Uh, one, you pointed out that last year he had a week two prime time big game, oh, and then McLaurin continued, was the wide receiver three last week. Yeah, and then continued to disappear. So Odell Beckham to me has a question mark. His arrow isn't pointing down because of last week. His arrow isn't pointing up because of eighteen games. He's just a question mark. Jarvis Landry's only had 8.6 fantasy points and 6.1 fantasy points in the last two weeks. Do you trust him at all as a flex, or are you letting him no. sit on your beam? Yep. I'm letting him sit on my waivers. Logan Thomas, Mike's going to talk about him a little bit later. Mm -hmm. Tight end for the Washington football team. Heavily targeted last week, didn't deliver for you, um, but there aren't a lot of pass-catching options. It's pretty much McLaurin, Sims, and Thomas, and then maybe if they involve Gibson a little bit more, that's your Dwayne Haskins targets. Let's move on. Tennessee, the Titans taking on the Minnesota Vikings. Titans are 2-0. Vikings are 0-2. Titans are two-and-a-half-point road favorites. That's it? Well, yeah, I mean, the game's I guess in Minnesota. the road, but... The Titans also, uh, they're 2-0, and but through two weeks, they barely hang, hung on to win both games. Is that right? I mean, yeah, that's la correct. last week, Minshew almost got them. So it's been close. The Titans' defense hasn't looked as formidable as I as, uh, thought it would be when the year began, and Derrick Henry hasn't had the success that we expected, at least getting into hasn't the Hasn't transformed into the Eddie yet. That's right. Yeah, the, We need some snow first. Abominable. Yeah, yes. I, that nickname's tough because I know I'm not going to say abominable correctly no, no, yeah. very often. No, I like Derrick Yeti. Yeah, I'm up with that. I don't mind it. Titans too. But right now, he's just Derrick Henry. Right. Because yeah. it's, it's warm outside. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, getting hit by Derrick Henry is bad to begin with. If you add, like... Cold temperatures. That's the secret. You just uh, pass on that. 48 and a half point over under. That's a pretty high over under this it week. It is. Well, the Titans defense has disappointed. The Minnesota Vikings defense has been non-existent. I, uh, you know, I, I, I said this once. I'm targeting the Vikings uh, across the board here. I'm hoping that A.J. Brown does not play so there's clarity. If he does not play, Corey Davis becomes someone that's going to be To be in. clear, you're not targeting the Vikings. You're targeting the team that's facing the Vikings? Correct. I'm, okay. I'm targeting them as you know someone that I want to attack. Um, however, I, I want it said that I do think that they are a well-run franchise with a good head coach. Those things don't stay putrid forever. This was a a slow, you know, weird off season where you lost digs and you had some changes to the offense, a ton of changes to the defense. Half of the defensive starters were new. This is someone that I'm going to target until proven otherwise. But as soon as they have a good game, I will immediately buy in and stop just the hyper targeting. Okay. Um, that's how I'm approaching looking at the Vikings. Are you worried about this offense without Stephon Diggs and what we've seen through two weeks from Dalvin Cook? 
No, nah, Dalvin Cook has still been fine. He's he is the guy. He will he's the goal line guy. He gets stump offs. Uh, Dalvin Cook is he's fine. He, at this point, the way the things have panned out, if you took Dalvin Cook over Alvin Kamara, sure, in hindsight now you're kicking yourself, but Dalvin Cook has still been very solid for fantasy. I think he has three touchdowns through two weeks. He's well, a touchdown machine. That'll help. Derrick Henry, no touchdowns on the ground yet. 25 and 31 carries, I believe. The touchdowns are coming. I'm going to say that Derrick Henry this scores week. a touchdown this week. Is this your is this your kind of buy low window for Derrick Henry in fantasy? Yeah, if there is one at all for Derrick Henry, it's right now. Yeah, I would certainly scoop him up if I could. I I tried to trade for him um, after week one, kind of being a meh game, and you know it, it just depends on your league. In our league, there's no chance that Derrick Henry is. I couldn't trade my team for him if I wanted. I've tried. I've tried to trade for him. No luck. Adam Thielen and Dalvin Cook, the only two options you're looking at on the Minnesota side. That is correct. Thielen we have as the wide receiver nine on the week. Tennessee's given up the second highest pass success rate in the NFL. A.J. Brown, we don't know if he's going to be out there. Oh, please don't. If he is, the Vikings defense is putrid, giving up almost 45 fantasy points a game to opposing wideouts. That makes Corey Davis a spot start if he's not there. That yes, is. but the question is, I think, the the, the difficult question, because if, if A.J. Brown is out, Corey Davis in every lineup that you have him, but if A.J. Brown plays, you know, I'm I'm speaking as someone who has A.J. Brown and Corey Davis on the same team because when I lost A.J. Brown, I picked up Corey Davis. I'm sure there's a lot of us out there. Which Lucky. one do you start? <laughs> Which, yeah. Which one do you start if they both play? Because I certainly want a piece of the passing game against the Vikings. I would be starting A.J. Brown. <sighs> if, he, if he's out there, I would be starting him. Corey Davis was uh, – uh, pretty much invisible last week other than he caught an early short touchdown and that saved his fantasy week. So I would I would go with A.J. Brown in the big play. Sure, uh, but uh, week one, Corey Davis, when A.J. Brown was there, was the more targeted, more efficient, better wide receiver. So I, I think it's difficult. I need to see at least a full practice. So tomorrow, if A.J. Brown has a full practice tomorrow, then I would be confident to play him. Otherwise, I would not. And I would play Jonu yes, Smith either yeah, way. Yeah, Jonu is the That's biggest beneficiary from A.J. Brown being off the field. Yeah. Jonu Smith, let's ask a rest of season question, though. We know Brown will be back eventually. Would you rather have Jonu Smith or Mike Gesicki rest of season? Jonu Smith. But lean, it's close. I lean Jonu, yeah. Okay. Noah Fant or Jonu Smith? Noah, Noah Fant. Fant. Evan Ingram or Jonu Smith? Jonu Smith. Ingram. Okay. All right. The Raiders take on the New England Patriots this week. The Raiders undefeated. The Patriots are at 500. But they're Ooh. six point home favorites, and it's a forty seven and a half point over under. They were one play away from being undefeated. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't even get close though on that play. No, I no. watched that play from a few angles, and it was pretty gross. It was gross. Yeah, it was a that was a whoopsie by Cam Newton. Yeah, it's that whole uh, debate of jumbo package versus you know spread it out a little bit and then let Cam run. I mean, they you just got to always have a leak out. You know, if 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 the play breaks down, he can dump it over the top mid flip. Could he have dumped it off? Even with a leak out on that particular play, Cam Newton just uh, – the defender won, and Cam yeah. Newton ran right into it. All right. Uh, the Raiders, though, they are 2-0 and through two weeks, and the Patriots are big-time home favorites. It's a 47.5 point over under. We'll be talking about Cam Newton in a little while. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Get on board, baby. Let's go. But even though Russell Wilson torched the Patriots, who are <laughs> – because of that game, now 27th in the NFL, in terms of fantasy points given up to opposing wide receivers, I don't think we expect that to be the norm facing Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf, and Russell Wilson. What do you believe about this Patriots defense right, right now? Is there anybody that you would start on this Raiders offense for fantasy purposes outside of Josh Jacobs and well, Darren Waller? Oh, man. Outside of those two? No. no. How dare you take you, my easy answers? You almost didn't name the Walrus. <laughs> But Henry Ruggs, Brian no. Edwards, Hunter Renfro, it's a no for all of them. Stephon Gilmore is still there. And while the Patriots lost a lot of defensive stalwarts to the COVID opt-out list and they aren't the same defense we saw last year, they are still obviously well coached with a couple of great options. And Gilmore is not going to have to match up against DK Metcalf every week. It's 
Jacobs, it's Waller, it's move on from the Raiders. Yeah, like I would rather play – I am playing Nikhil Harry over any of those other options for the Raiders. Yeah, that was going to be a question on the other side. Nikhil Harry, a lot of targets past couple of weeks, kind of seems to be Cam's other main guy, like Edelman and Harry. What's super weird is Nikhil Harry is being used in the short game, and we've seen Julian Edelman <laughs> catch quite a few bomb passes. Uh, there's – Bill Belichick, always flipping the script. Yeah, Harry's going to have some games this year, especially. Yeah, he, he hasn't gotten into the end zone yet. He tried, but he didn't. And he, if you watch him at Arizona State, a lot of big plays on screen passes. Uh, he has the ability to take that screen to the house. Sonny Michelle, horrible. No. Last week it was Burkhead getting all the snaps. Still not good for fantasy. James White still not back at practice. Um. Who knows if he even plays this week? Are Sony you? Sony Michelle, I, I wouldn't even put a claim in on him if he was on waivers. Yeah, that's that's how I feel about that's where I am. Sony. I mean, he he has stunk. He's not getting the opportunities you want. He's splitting time, and then if you pick him up for some hopeful turnaround, then Damian Harris comes off the short term IR. I I don't see any reason to. That is a good point to if, roster look, Sony. Andy, I love Andy bringing up Alshon Jeffrey as a claim right now because he's on your waiver wire. Damian Harris may also be on your waiver wire. This is just a stash. I, I don't. I'm not proclaiming Damian Harris is coming in. He's taking the job. He's going to break out. But the drumbeat of the off season was growing very strongly for him. Everyone was saying he was the best running back in camp. So he at least has that opportunity. Yeah, and it, it. I was going to bring him up, but I wasn't going to be as positive as you were, just in the sense that we know now what New England does inside the five. It's going to be Cam Newton. Mm -hmm. So if you take away any chance of a goal line, but maybe you still got James White. Maybe that, it's because they look at the running backs and go, these guys are hmm. not going to get it done. All right, the 49ers take on the New York Giants this week. In New York, the 49ers are four-and-a-half-point favorites. They're beat up, but not too beat up to beat up. The Giants. <laughs> I love it. That was maybe the best sentence you have ever said on this show. I got it in three times. Uh, so we we know kind of the situation. We lost Saquon Barkley last week. Devonta Freeman is going to be practicing, but he's uh, how worked into the offense will he be? If I had to pick a running back, it would be unquestionably Deion Lewis this week because I know he's going to be involved in the passing game of this offense. We saw it last week where he actually added, you know, some fantasy production. But it's not a situation I want to be in. Picking between multiple Giants running backs don't, don't do it. for a spot start against the defensive front of the 49ers. Yeah, don't, I, don't I, would, do it. I would pick Devonta Freeman, and it's irrelevant because whoever it is, you don't want to start. And I think that there are, are better options out there. I mean, obviously, if you've lost, you know, two starting running backs and you had to pick one of these guys up, uh, our apologies, but outside of that crazy situation, um, you know, I just traded for Devonta Freeman on the cheap in our dynasty league because I am in serious need, serious need of a running back in that dynasty league. He, he's not in my lineup this week, even against a beat up San Francisco 49ers defense. Let me broaden the question. Is there any giant that you would play this week? Because, yes. the, okay, is it Darius Slayton? It is. Okay. I think Darius Slayton is a solid play. I think that. Evan Ingram, I, it really hasn't come through in a big way. He he, he was heavily targeted last yeah, week. Yeah, it and he was a cardiac player of through the whole first half. You're going, ah, why did I draft Evan Ingram? And then he finally got involved. Ingram is a he's he's still a weekly tight end starter at this point. And then Sterling Shepard's Gold, out. Yeah, and that's what I was going to go to Golden Tate. Uh, Gold, if you are in quite the pickle, I think Golden Tate is worth. Uh, a potential flex start. He's also a player that you could just throw on your bench for over the weekend and see see how things shake out as the Giants schedule is about to open up and Shepard is going to miss multiple games. All right. On the other side, we don't know if it's going to be Jimmy G or Nick Mullins, but we do know the backfield is going to be Jarek McKinnon and Jeff Wilson. Uh, I think both of those players are startable. Yeah. Um, I, I think Wilson will get a ton of work. Because McKinnon has been coming back from you know two years of injuries, both players could give you fantasy production. Outside of them, though, we're looking at Rule Eighty One. Mm -hmm. Jordan Reed, George Kittle. We don't know if Kittle's going to be available. 
We'll give you an update, but right now he's questionable. Well, rule, let's confirm. I mean, we need to walk through the steps. Yeah, rule 81. Is Jordan Reed healthy? Yes. Okay. Part two, is George Kittle not playing? We, uh, we don't know yet, but if he is not, then rule 81 is in full effect, and Jordan Reed is in your lineup. Yep. Okay. Is there anybody else on the San Francisco side that you... No. Okay. No. Let's get to our starts. Starts of the week. Any volunteers to kick this one off? Sure, I'll go first. Uh, here was... He pulls out a <clears throat> carton I'll of cigarettes. <laughs> Let me like get the my, walrus let me get my smokes. Yeah. Um, I should have taken that time to not go first. <laughs> That's why I laughed. Um, I'm going to go first. I got this. <laughs> with, <laughs> with a quarterback that uh, was a draft season favorite. I think he was probably the most common late round quarterback that the three of us combined were taking left, right, and center, who we then dropped everywhere before week one and didn't get the chance to play because he did not have Kenny Galladay. Matthew Stafford is a great quarterback in general. He leads the NFL in comeback games for a reason, and it's a great fantasy reason. It's because their team stinks, and he needs to come back, but he's great at it. He's phenomenal at you know the, the, the second half of the game, and if you look at the over-under here, a major points bonanza expected by Vegas in this game, high pace of play, Kenny Galladay back, I am willing to start uh, Matthew Stafford. Now, that, that is on the contingency that Galladay is yeah, back. Yeah, so I was going to ask you because I've been here before. I thought Galladay was playing when I made Stafford my start of the week in week one. He ended up sitting it out. Wasn't as pretty. My expectation because they took their time with Galladay is that they did, the, the, the Lions did what the Eagles did with Miles Sanders. They just flat said, no, we want to use you at full strength. We're not going to let you come back a little hobbled. And so I, my expectation is that Galladay will play. That's why I'm making Stafford my start of the week. If he isn't, you could pivot to plenty of other options. All right, I'm jumping in. I'm giving you another streamer. He's my start of the week, but uh, I wanted to highlight this streaming option. He's going tonight, so if you're going to make that decision, you got to go now. Like maybe you're waiting on Jimmy Garoppolo. I would much rather play Ryan Fitzpatrick, the starting quarterback for the Miami Dolphins, over Nick Mullins. Like just you're waiting on that for some reason. He just put up a top 12 performance against the Buffalo Bills. Jacksonville, meanwhile, just allowed a quarterback eight last week. You can pass on Jacksonville. Ryan Fitzpatrick, he's, we were talking about it at the beginning. He, like, he's still good. Week one was against the Patriots. That's a tough matchup. Ryan Fitzpatrick is picking up where he left off at the end of last year, and I think that you could play him with confidence tonight. All right, I'm going to go with Cameron Newton. Cam oh, Newton yes. facing the Raiders. <laughs> Two weeks <laughs> into the Booty. season. He Where's the drop, man? 15. <laughs> oh. I was warming it up for you. You're right. I was too busy thinking about the argument for him. <laughs> That's your argument. I'm done. He's been booty scooting. All right, 15. my start of the week at running back. <laughs> 15 carries, 11 carries, two touchdowns on the ground in each week, figuring it out, 397 through the air last week. He's, Love him. He's healthy. Uh, watch him play. He is healthy right now, and healthy Cam Newton is fantasy goodness. Yeah, and it can get better. It can get better because he, you know, he hasn't played with Harry and Edelman in this offense for a while. Didn't even have James White last week. It can get better. All right, my start of the week at running back is going tonight as well. Is James Robinson? I haven't seen any of your guys start yet. This is all exciting to me. So James Robinson, this isn't some smash play matchup wonder, but he should be started in 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 most leagues. I can't imagine that he's not start worthy, and I want to give my confidence in what I've seen from him as a player. Even though his snaps came down this last week, his opportunities went up four targets last week to go along with 16 carries. That's a phenomenal workload. He had 16 carries week one and two. He's going to get the work. Tonight's game shouldn't be out of control one way or the other. So I think this is a good James Robinson matchup. Miami looks pretty good against running backs so far this season, but it's a mirage. Week one was the Patriots. We just discussed how they don't have running backs. And then week two, last week, was against Buffalo where they just didn't need running backs because Josh Allen was like, and you get a touchdown, and you get a touchdown. Right. So I, I think you can run against Miami, 
And my main point here is that I think James Robinson is good. Yeah, and I think so. He's getting the opportunity. He's got enough talent. I'm willing to start him. My running back start of the week is, as always, whoever is playing the Carolina Panthers, and you're saying, well, it's Austin Eckler. That's too out of reach, too obvious for the start of the week. I completely agree. That's why it is Joshua Kelly, who has been a running back too now in both weeks. Last week, we saw 26 opportunities. We saw his snap count jump 25%. They are back. They are back to the Austin Eckler and the Melvin Gordon role or mold for this offense. And that's who Joshua Kelly. Joshua Kelly is playing the part of Melvin Gordon. So I'm in on, I'm in on him. The matchup is great. The opportunities will be there. My running back start of the week is a response to the vast amount of poo-pooing that this player has received. Mm. And when you talk about playing Carolina, well, it's pretty nice to play the yes, Detroit please. Lions. <laughs> Kenyon Drake is playing the Lions this week. Detroit just got utterly bamboozled oh. by Aaron Jones. <laughs> bamboozled. They, they did. They gave up uh they've given up 6.92 per carry this year on 51 carries. Opposing running backs are averaging averaging an extra 13 fantasy points against the Detroit Lions. Kenyon Drake breakout week this week. I against love it. me in our league of record. Oof, let's let's hope. This better not be any kind of fantasy reaper uh, if it is backwards <laughs> logic here, then uh, all right at, at wide I'll receiver, I've got my last week's taking it to a hundred player who came through. It's Deontay Johnson. Um, dare I say the wide receiver one for the Pittsburgh you, he is. Steelers? It's not that's not a dare. He is. Yeah, I mean he 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 looks great. He's hyper targeted. His his target market share is great. He has the eighth best matchup this week according to. Uh, pro football focus as far as the cornerback matchup if Bradley Roby is on him. If you remember week one, Sammy Watkins uh, had a very good week. I, I think that that's going to be kind of a similar uh, matchup here against Houston. Deontay Johnson should be able to beat them. And I'm going with Allen Robinson. It, we, we talked about it a little bit before, so I'll keep it short. Atlanta is the worst team against quarterbacks right now. They are f the fourth worst team against wide receivers. The matchup is there. I think Allen Robinson has his breakout week. If you're going to try and trade for him, you have to do it now. I'm going with the rookie, CeeDee Lamb, oh. this week. No team has given up more fantasy points to opposing wide receivers than Seattle. That's why they got to let Russ cook as they're giving it up on the back end. Giving up 65 fantasy points last week against Atlanta, then 44 against New England. Uh, they're just hemorrhaging fantasy points, and CeeDee Lamb's been very impressive. I think we're going to see a big play in this one. I really wanted to go Michael Gallup for my start of the week, but I saw you had CeeDee Lamb. Yeah, the logic is It's 100% the same. The same. I so, mean, do you guys remember when Lamar Jackson had a just an astronomical 9% touchdown rate yes. last year? It's completely unsustainable. Do you right. guys know what Russell Wilson's touchdown rate is right now? Oh, no. I'm guessing north of 10. 14.3. <laughs> And you know what's crazy about it is, you know, he had two of the five longest pass completions of the week last week. And the it's like, it's Russell, but David Moore's catch was like, Ridiculous! Yeah. Oh, where he they're making the, Russell the, look the good side? too. He has some sous chefs over there for <laughs> sure. Uh, he's, right. he's not alone, but yeah. he in is the kitchen. Chef jokes, <laughs> card puns. This show is yeah. unbelievable. Welcome to the Fantasy <laughs> Footballers Podcast. That's right. Uh, at tight end, I've got Noah Fantastic against yeah. the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Against anybody, it doesn't matter. He's right now. He's locked. Uh, in. He's locked in with, with Cortland Sutton being gone. Jerry Judy is a little bit banged up. They just have to give him the ball in his hands at least six or seven times. And if that happens, he has this athleticism that can break big plays that can get in the end zone. So you got to stay in the flames with uh, Noah fantastic. And I'm going with Logan Thomas. Uh, look, if you're, if you're a supporter on join the foot.com, not only do you get an extra podcast episode each and every week, you get access to our tools like the Stream Finder, and it is Stream Finder time. You want to find those tight ends to play. Well, you're going to see a glaring situation here against uh, Cleveland allowing the most points to the tight end position. You say, well, one of those was Mark Andrews. Yeah, I, I got it. I got it. But CJ Uzama and Drew Sample both had a fantasy productive game. Uh, Logan Thomas is pulling in a robust twenty-seven percent target share. That's only that's second behind only 
Darren, I am the walrus. So the the volume hasn't completely hit yet for Logan Thomas, but the volume is there and the matchup is there. Turns out we're going to have three players in our starts of the week that play tonight because I'm going Mike Gesicki wow. at the tight end position. All right. Gesicki got going last week. Huge athletic plays. I don't know if you saw the one-handed catch across the middle. 11 targets, 8 catches, 130 yards, and a touchdown. That was a huge week. And Jacksonville's been shellacked in the first two weeks by opposing tight ends, including Johnny last yeah. week, torching them. So I think he is a reliable start this week. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. <clears throat> With a fire first name that I really admire, I'm going with the Seattle Seahawks, Jason Myers. Yeah, baby. The best one yet. That was some of your finest work. Thank Jason. you. Thank you, Mike. To admires. Be, to be clear, you rhymed Myers with Myers there at the end? Uh, admires, but <laughs> sure. Okay. <laughs> I put a prefix on it. Were you impressed, Brooks? Oh, yeah. I was. I mean, it's, very... it's not about impressing, it's about entertaining. Yeah, and the bar. There is no bar. There is no bar for that. <laughs> the bar is a line drawn on the ground. I can <laughs> simply step across. All right, the rest of the matchups. And you still manage to trip on Sometimes it, it gets in my on. way. <laughs> the rest of the matchups tomorrow. Uh, but we're done for today. So enjoy the game tonight. Jointhefoot.com is the community. If you want to get the extra episode, we just came out with the Footcast yesterday. So you can check that out at jointhefoot.com. Otherwise, goodbye. Farewell. I admire you, Jason. Thank you. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers. <laughs>